Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Happy Monday, everybody. Turn that up for me a little yeah. bit, please, if you don't mind. So, yeah, there it is. I'll turn it up more. That's a nice piece of music. I, I like Sometimes it. Sometimes I really don't just uh, listen to it. Welcome to the uh, show, Whoa, Whoa. I uh, hope you had a wonderful weekend. Wonderful weekend down here in West South Florida where uh, we are officially on the surface of the sun. Ha! Uh, and will be for uh, till October. Uh as I look at my shot in the monitor here, I have to say that uh, what my son said to me was true. He said, Daddy, you don't have as much hair as you used to. Well, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. I, I love know. kids. From the mouths of eight-year-olds, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm trying to think. Babes. He's probably in math, so he's learning greater than and less than. Yes. That's about that level. So He's, a- he's got his last two tests today, and uh, you know he's going to get uh, uh, a firm handshake if he gets his straight A's, which he's on the uh, path to. So I hope he uh, is able to pull that off. He said, Dad, I'm pretty sure it's going to be easy. Third yeah, grade? Good, you know, yeah. I mean, I, He's going into third grade. I He's think in second grade. grade we were still getting checks and pluses. You know, I don't think they had, they had letter grades when I was oh, in no, second grade. Oh, no, they had grade. letter grades. Did they? Yeah. Maybe my school was special. <laughs> <laughs> did he bring his helmet to school or did he leave it at home? He's fine. He's doing great. It was, uh, it's was. it been all him and uh, lots of family togetherness over the weekend. And uh, life is good. Life is good down here in West South Florida. I am uh, I have a correction to make uh, regarding re- references that I've made to uh, the woman who was consulting me on nutrition. Oh, yeah. Uh, she. I, I think I was kind of all over. She's kind of a fitness model type thing. I think I misspoke when I said she is a, I wrote it down, uh, and this isn't going to work either. All right. There you go. <laughs> you know, I'm still arranging the studio in, yes. in a way that I can see everything, and it's like bars and uh, very difficult. She is a bikini bodybuilder. Oh, yes. Yes. Are you really? familiar with, are you well, familiar like the, with this I think it's, um, Is it the Fitness Bikini Pro, IFB International Fitness Bikini Pro? Is is that the... Oh, I'm did, not sure. Does she but, compete? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Let me, yeah, absolutely. let me look that up. Uh, greetings from uh, Norton, Virginia. We said that last week. Uh, so that's a repeat city. Uh, Laughlin, Nevada, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, Halmstad, Sweden, and Florence, Italy. Yay! Where Rob's daughter Julia is on her way now to uh, Florence, Italy, and but currently be, in uh, Austria. <laughs> yeah, so she's having some problems with the flights. Is yeah, that, there were, uh, what's she going on? sat on the tarmac for probably a, an hour and a half to two hours last night because we had wicked thunderstorms that rolled through with a cold front, and her flight was just so delayed. She knew upon takeoff that her original connecting flight she wasn't going to make, and that's really sad and frustrating when this is i mean she's traveled before she's driven places but this is her first solo air flight she's having one of those semesters abroad yes yes she's going to be four weeks in florence and how excited are you uh, dad i mean that's got to be pretty cool very very excited and i can't wait for her to get the most out of it but as a dad when she is up in the air and you're realizing you don't know what's going to happen when she lands it's very very scary because you're not there to help her out. But Carrie was on the line with United for hours last night, and they basically said, we can get her to Bologna, but that would be an overnight stay, and then nonstop to Florence. And Carrie said, well, do you provide the hotel or anything like that? Is it, uh, I'm going to have to check with my supervisor. And then the, fine, the phone dropped. So, so is she sleeping in airports now? No, it turned out we got a text from Julia at 4 a.m. that United had already, because she flew Air Austria. What was the original route going to be? It was going to be Dulles to Vienna to Florence. D- d- people don't know Dulles around the country. Uh, Washington Dulles. Said, Dulles which yeah, is right. local Vienna in northern Virginia? Yes, it's a short flight. <laughs> it was, yeah, Dulles Airport in... Uh, <laughs> it, to Vienna, Virginia. It's a six-second flight. Yeah. It, it's uh, <laughs> Wheels up, wheels down, boom, you're there. The hard part That's is it. getting up to altitude. 
because they're right. only about 12 miles apart. Yeah, well, you know, that sometimes it's a really hot landing. Yeah, like, oh, it is. They're coming it's like in a hot. touch and go is what it is. So she was flying from Washington, D.C. to Vienna, Austria. And then she was supposed to have about a two and a half hour layover, I think. And then, and then fly from Vienna to Florence. To Florence. But that was messed up. So what United has uh, arranged is that she's going to go from Vienna to Frankfurt, which I've flown into Frankfurt, and that is one of those scary big gulag-like airports. Why it's, are they scary? It's just huge. And and <laughs> English is not the mother tongue. So, I mean, it was. it's a very strange... Uh, Such- <laughs> what? You're just something. You were so I worry. scary big airport. She's fine. She's I, I think she'll. Up. I think she'll be fine. And then they she, have English on yeah. signs. And then she'll fly Google to translate on a phone. You're and good then to she go. has it. And then she goes to Florence. So uh, so she was going to. She'll go be there at dinner time tonight. The original itinerary was uh, Vienna all the way directly to Florence. Right, and now they've added a stop. But at least you're getting her there on the right Germany. day. Yes. So Why get, did they add a stop? Uh, because I think that with the flight she missed, a lot of stuff was booked up. Okay. Uh, right. but right. I mean, I, I really appreciate the fact that United actually, when she landed and went to the service counter, already had it arranged for her. I thought that was pretty cool. So she will Is get she there. Be, uh, you, you, we had uh, discussed this briefly. W- will she be living with a family? No, uh, they've actually, oh, they've won't. got apartments with, she's going to be staying in a room with her roommate from here. So she's got a friend there, which is really cool. And then other students from around will all be in this sort of One of the complex. things about traveling abroad, though, uh, is to uh, the, the whole program uh, is designed for immersion yes. in the language. And that's unfortunate that she's not going to be living with a family because my sister years and years and years ago uh, not only went over to Florence, Italy, uh, but she stayed with a family and not only lived with an Italian family and came back from Florence, Italy, fluent in Italian, but she took herself an Italian boyfriend when Whoa. she was over there. Wow. I think Had she studied was, any Italian before she went over? I don't know. I don't know. Because I Julia is care. taking I didn't ball. care. I was seven yeah. years old. He's got to live with that yeah. and in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, boy, I should call my sister. Yeah, and but find kissing out, is uh, the same yeah. in any language. I wonder if they found each other again on Facebook. Wow, that, yeah. Vito well, no, Tortellini. I, I mean, it was almost. I think he may have came to the. Uh, he may have come to the United he States. He visited the mainland to see her. I think he is, visit, uh, visited is the mainland. Is he the guy think, that she married to get him a green card? No, no, it never no. happened. Oh, okay. Marriage never happened. But it was uh, pretty cool that she came uh, back from Italy. Because of the immersion, you have to, and and it's unfortunate that she was she originally going to live with a, a family. Was that ever part of the? Because uh, going over there, you want you just she's basically going over to Italy, but from a language standpoint, she probably won't be immersed. Per, no, no, in but, the language with a uh, with an English speaking roommate. But uh, looking at the uh, all the stuff they have planned, she's going to see. It's not she's not going to just be in Florence. She'll she'll get a chance to visit Rome and visit the Tower of Pisa. Arriva del Roma. But uh, also, it's it's you know it is. Did your sister go over for art? What was her focus? Uh, or do you remember? I don't, I don't know. Because I mean, art. I mean, it's not going to be a language and culture thing as much. <laughs> she as, would have been like, uh, how old would she be? How old's Julia right now? Julia is twenty one. Twenty one. So twenty one minus seven is fourteen. Uh, she went over to 14. visit the Axis uh, Power. So this to like uh, no, that's fourteen. Them. She's in I Mussolini 14. Towers. Yeah, yeah. I didn't care what she was doing. I knew she yeah. got to go. She, let, I didn't go to Europe. I let me ask you this: great. Did you have the Amanda Knox talk with her? I <laughs> did not have the Amanda Knox talk with her. Sorry. Yeah, she's got to be careful over there. Told yeah. her to be careful. Uh, you know. yes. Or maybe okay. you sit down and watch Bro Town Palace together. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, uh, well, I know, I know, but uh, you, you, she's got her eye. I'm sure. Does she have any kind of indoctrination before they go over there? As there were several. To do? There were several Zoom meetings and all the stuff. It was all. It was all nailed down. And she and Carrie was like a drill sergeant uh, the whole I, way there. I'll find you. <laughs> Don't. I, that's not. I will kill you. Oh, Mike, no, stop it. And also, joke? and that should be an Italian accent if you're going to do that. <laughs> Why? Well, no. I mean, because it's uh, no. Because no. Liam Neeson. You're back the dad the going after him. Oh, well, I but would. Can you be skinny, Rob? I'm skinny now. I can find you. No. <laughs> I will find you.
I will find. I what are the there are three things. There's something I will find you, and I will kill you. Now you have a specific set of skills. That's it. And then uh, I have a very specific set of skills. <laughs> skills that make me a nightmare for a man like you. Yeah. I will find you, and I will. Kill and you. you're hangry. And then the and then the guy goes, "Good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good Mary. luck. Good luck." Uh, yeah, so how many kids are going uh, on this uh, on this little journey? I think from VCU will be represented by I think five kids, and then oh, there's, wow. uh, okay. there's other kids right. from other universities. And Julia is so funny; she's very much like me. And there's like text threads of all the kids that are going over. And like one girl's big concern was, "Is anyone bringing scissors?" If we're going to do art, we're going to need scissors, and I don't know how to get scissors through security. And Julia said. I'll get scissors. And Saturday, she went to like three different stores, and she found airplane-approved Fisker's scissors. So yes, there will be scissors in Italy. And also, she said, "So I'm they not... can do their cutting and 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 she said, pasting and." Dad, and I was mostly selfish. I wanted to crochet on the flight, so I needed scissors. Does she crochet? Oh, she crochets and knits. Yeah, she took a class in it. Oh, okay. She oh, got an A. Okay. That's good. Uh, well, good for her. A, a, a in crochet. Yeah, a in crochet, <laughs> A in glass blowing, all these crazy things. Yeah, She's she art. Made, she's an art student. She right? is. And she's got to take, especially at the lower levels, all, you know, introductory to all this. Stuff. She may carry the coolest vase. She made my dad a lobster claw out of glass. It's oh, so, cool. I mean, she's really, there's not anything art oriented that she totally just can't do passably and usually so she's she in the right uh profession doing yes that. i think will so. will there be any chance at all that she would ever like really go out and be uh you know not working for a company or anything but but actually going out and becoming a an artist i uh, think she you know, could working in a medium or something like I that i think she could remember before she went to college she had that stuff i think it was on etsy the print she mm -hmm. made that she was mm -hmm. you know she had them for sale and some of them are really striking and impressive there's some that are sort of funny but there was one portrait of Robert and one portrait of a friend of hers that I always thought were, they look like they were professionally done. And I mm -hmm. think she has, I think the world is ahead of her and whatever she wants to do. There's lots of work in graphic design. She has a part time job in a print shop. She has a part time job doing graphic design right now. But mm -hmm. I think that if she was inspired to be an artist, I think that is definitely within her realm. Uh, my sister, I know, uh, and, you know, take the boyfriend out of it, but it was really one of the great experiences of her life. It was really super, super cool. I, I hope so. Uh, and she has traveled extensively. I have not. Uh, she, you know, is very worldly, speaks still a little Italian. Mm. I do not have a second language. Just, 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 the, mimic, just experience so. to be exposed to that type of travel can in, it can inspire you. Yeah, Robert yeah. is looking yeah. into traveling abroad. His junior year, he's going to go to Pittsburgh mm. <laughs> for a I, weekend. It's a long, okay too, it's right? a long weekend. Just, just a drive. Uh, actually, right. Robert is off my worry list right now because his grades for the second semester were a three point five. Oh my God! What a from the ashes, Rob. Yep. And then he he's got the rising phoenix, and he chased That's down. Fantastic! He, he chased like down. Uh, he was. <laughs> Most of the number came after the point when we yeah. started. Um, so then, not only with that, he found some transferable credits from high school that he had never chased down. So those were able to transfer biology credits. And he's taking two English classes over the summer, which he excels in English. The reason he had to drop English first semester was attendance. Uh, so he's, yeah, you right. know, he's able to do this. When he completes these two three-credit English classes over the summer— he will be caught up, and likely his overall GPA will be close to a B. Okay. and All Which right. is a yeah. pretty good bounce back after one semester. I'm very proud of it. And he's working at fireworks. This time he's a waiter. He's a server. So he's okay. not bussing tables. So please remember to tip generously. Tip your waiters. Yes. That's I'm it. happy So that's you. an update on the family. How are you feeling? Uh, since we're going to get to Oscar in a second with his uh, his malady in the uh, I know, feel 2022, the year of the, of the sick. This weekend was the first weekend that I really felt like myself and like doing things and it was beastly hot this weekend as well 95 96 oh where you are too okay. yeah hot down and here, um sure. carrie and i have the same walking route every day but i don't walk with her because she walks faster than me and i find it embarrassing when she doubles back to ask me a question so <laughs> we walk the same route but separately and it was really hot and i i finished it i felt 
really tired at the end of it, but it was three miles and I was able to get it done. And Carrie came in and she she said, Ugh, I think I'm going to throw up. That was so hot. That was disgusting. And I just said, I feel okay. <laughs> okay, good. Well, good for you out in the heat. And, yeah. uh, Perfect. And we are joined again. Uh, Oscar is back Yay, in the yes, studio. studio. After a after his little uh, COVID deal. God, it's just been insane it's been you know Car- carla looked at me over the weekend and i was kind of sitting there staring off into space as i'm often want to do and yes. she said what i said i'm just it's been a lot it's been a lot dealing with tell uh, me you about know, everybody yeah, i bet uh and you are still covid positive but you're out of the contagious yeah zone, i think most right? people that have had covid and then wanted to reacclimate to the world uh have realized that they need to uh, get a rapid test on a regular basis, but you will test positive days, if not weeks, after your initial infection. Then not to appear naive, yeah. if you know you're going to test positive, why are you taking the rapid test? That's, I mean, that's my our policy here at work. Okay, right? that make makes sure sense. That, All right, that, cool. that, that, that's still going on. Mm-hmm. But So still, everybody's uh, been free of it at work, pretty much? Yeah. Uh, Everyone else, yes. But and your wife will be what a day or two behind you correct. coming in. Correct. Or no, no, she's like in. She's clear for the. She's clear yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, clear. over the weekend. No pox. No monkey pox. No, or anything? no monkey pox. Speaking of, got that Jesus down in Florida. Christ. Oh, you got it down in Broward County. But right remember this, the uh, alley. They absolutely. Said, the CDC said, eh, don't worry. <laughs> no, Jesus I heard Christ. a story this morning on CNBC. I like it uh, back in my routine of waking up, and that's what I how I figure out what life is about. Um, Whether or not you're going to bother. Yeah. Uh, And one of the analysts said, or the doctors, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. uh, You've seen him, Mike. Scott Gottlieb. Yes. Hi, everybody. (laughs) Wasn't he covering the Preakness? (laughs) Scott Gottlieb. I didn't watch the Preakness. Neither did I. No one cares since uh, what's his name. Yeah, wasn't in it. He said there may be um, a chance that, you know, you might not want to try on certain uh, pieces of clothing because you can... Because because the monkeypox can live longer on surfaces while not as contagious. Oh my! Can live God. longer on surfaces monkey than pox. than COVID. Than COVID could ever. Remember live. when it was wash your hands, don't touch anything, yeah. and then we found out it was airborne. Yeah. Well, isn't that nice that now they do have the uh, well? You know, hand sanitizer is yeah. uh, still and, very much a but big part of our world. Is living in denim. Oh <laughs> God, that's horrible! Don't right? try on clothes. I know. God. He's what not am I say- going to do? He- That's my number one activity. But he's not saying don't try Call on clothes. Call Talbots and tell them I won't be in. <laughs> he's saying fi- for the markets it, or, or just finances, that might, this might be something people don't want to do, um, especially if there is an outbreak in certain pockets of the, um, the population. Right. Now, there's also good news on that front that uh, there's no a- asymptomatic monkeypox. If you have monkeypox, you'll start, well, you'll see what looks like a rash apparently and, and again, fever, and then then you'll see the little welts pop up after the fact. So you'll get you'll get some indication early on if something's going on. Yeah. And did, can they give you something for it? Yes, there's apparent, apparently a uh, national stockpile for that has this these antivirals for this. Good God. What's what's the world coming to though? I mean, really, it just freaks me out. Monkey pox now. You know, wasn't this, this the weekend? All was, over again. Wasn't this the weekend you were going to go out looking for tuxedos and now you can't do that? I mean, when's oh, the last time you God. tried on clothes? I haven't tried on clothes in forever. No, I really buy uh, stuff online. No, I tried on clothes this weekend. You did? So did I. We went to Dillard's. We went to Dillard's this weekend. Carla had to uh, drop off, uh, exchange some underwear, and uh, I thought and you just Victoria's bought everything Secret. online. Huh? I, I buy a lot of stuff online, yeah. but I occasionally I'll pop in to see if there are any uh, sale well, prices you love, at the, the you big lo- box store. You love Dillard's. I love Dillard's. And there you is win. A I was at Kohl's. There is a particular material yeah. that they sell that I can only find there, this particular shirt that is a, well, for down here, it's a dress shirt. It's mm. a button-down short sleeve shirt. Because I want to look like a Denny's manager. That's what I want. <laughs> is there no, a problem I, here, sir? <laughs> no, but I was going out to I dinner with friends, <laughs> and I wanted a nice shirt because I don't have uh, any, and I, and I don't wear cotton down here anymore. Now, it's why a, is cotton that? Cotton is just not part, because it's so hot. Cotton is, a, cotton is cotton hot. Cotton used to Everything be the I coolest. Wear is synthetic like this. Cotton you know? used to be the coolest, <laughs> though. I mean, this coolest temperature-wise. Th- th- no, this, uh, you know, when I'm out, I have uh, out of doors, here you go. Uh, yeah, it's feel. the same. That, feel that material. Yeah. Do you have anything? You have? Do you have any material like that in your closet? Yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, I've got a black <laughs> polo shirt that's made like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's good. That's it. Congratulations. But that's I'm afraid good. to wear short sleeves to work because Oscar yells. 
I don't yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the synthetic stuff is down. And then there is this blend that they have. But cotton is uh, is is a different kind of material to wear. Yeah, And is. thank God I did wear the cooler material because I wore long pants to go to dinner, which I've, I've taken to doing down here. Monkey pox slacks. I'm a monkey box slack. No, they're, they're golf slacks that are of that same kind of material okay. that you would right. see the guys wear on tour, but they work, you know, they work perfectly well for going out to dinner with, uh, with long pants on. And we went to a, uh, with friends, with our, uh, our friends who have uh, twin boys, Michael's age. Oh, and wow. Michael gets along well with one of the, one of his, uh, one of the twins Fraternal is his best buddy. or identical. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And so uh, we- Why do you we, care for those details? Because it's always, <laughs> it's always neat when they look just alike. Okay, thanks. So anyway, uh, we, we go to the restaurant and it turned out that uh, <laughs> it was an old school experience- of an Italian restaurant to the to the extent where the the pictures on the wall were all old oh. Italy and stuff. Oh, neat. Like you're and, in Little Italy in Baltimore. But or they New York. had an they had an H V A C problem. <laughs> oh. And it oh, no. was balls hot. At least your Carla food didn't said, get cold. At one point, Carlo looked at me and said, did you spill something on your shoulder? Oh, no. No, I was sweating through my shirt. But every other element of this, including making the reservation, where the guy was like, hey, hey, Carla, bene, we see you then. And then, can we add to the reservation? We've got friends coming. Yes, of course, that is no problem. We have no. It was that, literally that kind of Italy Mm. uh, that we're getting. So, I mean, we went in and there was a vibe. Uh, now, you have to realize a vibe in Southwest Florida is something where you can rise above the walking dead. Okay. Because it is the average age. is a, is a That's all people do down here. That's all they do. They that, and they do it all the time. Eat, they go out to eat. Now, they go out to eat. A question about the heat within the building. Yes. Was it as bad as when we went to that live band karaoke place in Clarendon? Um. Uh, I Maybe close. Maybe wow. close. You have to realize it was 94 out here. Oh. Cloud cover. Yeah. Cloud cover so at 94. In. Yeah, it bakes in. And it was just weird. It a heavy weird. meal in heat. I mean, yeah, yeah well, it was. Uh, here's the process. More cream Carla, sauce. <laughs> Carla used to go to this place, uh, still does, I think, called Burn, where she works out. And one of her trainers. Uh, is married to the guy, and they now own this restaurant. I'm so glad. They I took thought, over this restaurant. I thought you were going to say she went to a restaurant called Burn, and that's a horrible name for a restaurant. <laughs> it's Burn, anal Burn. <laughs> uh, and we, and so we went there. It was here's what was weird. Okay, Carla was talking about uh, how she knew that her former uh, Burn instructor had this restaurant now and we should go. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. Sounds good. It used to be a place we went before. Uh, it was always very dark and kind of old school. And uh, But but let's go. And then Carla was, uh, you know, not really that into it. I said, well, I thought this was your train. Well, she wasn't my friend. She was just a tra- I said, but then why was the thing even brought up? Yeah. We, we all have discussions like that sure. with our wives, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Where something comes up and then, so when we get there, I said, are you going to look up your friend? She's not my friend. I said, okay. Oh. I, uh, are you going to say hello or something? And then it was uh, fine. It was a nice experience. But the best part. Real housewives of Southwest part, Florida. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it was, it was odd. It, it, but it was nice to have another couple. He's an older dad. I'm an older dad. So and we get along with the, uh, with the missus in this group, too. They're very nice people. And... The best part of all was early on. I think it had to be. We, we had a reservation early. We had like five o'clock, and about five thirty, you start hearing. <laughs> and there's a guy with a uh, black pants, a black vest, and a red shirt on, with a wireless microphone, and he is singing and just walking through the joint. I said, "This is like uh, something out of Casino. That's beautiful. This is old school. Yeah, he's just walking around. Salut, and uh, cool. you know, I I have always subscribed to the philosophy that people are dying to be entertained. Yes, of course, oh, of they course. are dying to be entertained, and I am like a child." Especially if you give me a uh, an old fashioned, and uh, I'm even more like a child at this particular point, where I'm like, "This is really isn't." Great. The, you looked around, and said, "Isn't this great? Isn't this great?" You know, everybody else is not. 
I can get over enthusiastic about a place. Uh, meanwhile, the guy, the dad to my right, is like, oh, it's like a sauna in yeah, here. Yeah, did you bring the and, kids? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Of so the kids I'm guessing came. it's a table of like six, maybe seven, seven, and you're the mm-hmm. only one that's enjoying the music, and the rest have their head down, hoping he doesn't come over. It's not that I'm not. I'm the only one enjoying it. It's I'm the only one that is probably this enthusiastic about it because I love. Look, it's Italian food. It's a red sauce joint. Okay? Yeah. Okay. It's it's Gravy. spaghetti. That's what it is. All right. So if you throw a little, and first of all, the owner was super nice. By the way, the uh, the place. I'll give him a plug. The place is called Limoncello, which oh, nice. is like the Italian liqueur. Yeah. And yeah. at the end of the evening. He brought over a little after dinner thing with uh, limoncello in it, and that it was just it was that way. It was that old school trying hard. And at that point, I took him aside. I said, "Hey, I I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you this is a uh, what's the deal with the air conditioning in here?" <laughs> and he tells me the story that the HVAC unit uh, crapped out on him earlier in the day, mm-hmm. and he had uh, he had he was one down. So he was having trouble. But if I looked up at the vents of this particular yes. joint, uh, they might have been one down since the late 70s. Got it. Got I'm yeah. not sure. That it one down a, line could have been there for a while. I'm guessing it was I tough. remember that we would used to look at the cafeteria in our school and the, how thick the dust was on the yeah. units. And then there was always a ribbon so they could know if it was blowing. Right. And I'm guessing at Lemoncello, the ribbon, she's a straight down. <laughs> well, you know, anything that filters air, anything that blows air into your house, into your lungs, like with a CPAP. Oh, speaking of CPAP machine. Yes. I, I forgot they have filters, too. They have a little, yeah. little square. It's about this big uh, foam filter that uh, that you put into the thing. <laughs> it had been a while. I'm lucky I'm alive. Oh, no. I, I don't know how I have not succumbed to some sort of lung disease because this looked like the filter on my house. Oh, when no. I, when I take it off after three months. Like, Jesus so Christ. Disgusting. Yeah, I just, you know, I get in a habit and uh, it was a, one side was clean. I said, hey, this is really cool. And they turned it over. It's like, oh, my God, look mm. at that. Help me. Oh, my God. It was horrible. That was loud. This place that has really a loud. has a beauteous website. What did you have to eat? Uh, linguini volganini or what? It was uh, clams. Oh, yum, 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 clams. Yum. It was, it was, it was. Did clams you find an and, oyster? Uh, uh, no, it was clams. What? No oysters. What no, is that like a good luck thing in Bolivia? I don't know. My I mom found the looked, oyster. My mom used to always say, "Look for the oyster." No, that was your standard uh, Italian <laughs> red sauce joint, and it was fine. And uh, you know, and I always have the fantasy. Uh, I tucked in my. I had a white shirt on, so I I tucked in my napkin above, and uh, whenever I do that, I envision the scene in The Godfather. You know, where yeah. the guys are eating the spaghetti when he gets shot in the head by Michael. Yeah, at any point did the father go yeah. to the bathroom <laughs> and come back <laughs> to get the well, gun? No, 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 with the gun behind me. Sorry. Okay, that's right. Uh, okay, just, yeah, but uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, speaking of the Godfather, um, have you all seen The Offer on I'm, Paramount I'm Plus? I'm about four no, but episodes a lot of people in. are telling me to I watch it. I just finished the series this weekend. You know when you have COVID, nobody wants to hang out with you, so you've got a lot of time by yourself. Yeah, so, I understand. Um, when, when I looked up The Offer, I was like, "This, there's no way this is going to be good. It is as billed and fascinating. It's fascinating it's got- and comically simplistic. It's not it's hard to follow. Kid, oh, is uh, oh, when you, but it's not a comedy, right? No, 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 no. But it is so easy to find. It's a wonderful story. It's basically the story. Is his name Ruddy Albert Ruddy? Yes. Uh, who Al Ruddy? Al Ruddy came in and he. This is I had no idea. He created Hogan's Heroes. And then left Hogan's Heroes to become a big shot producer at Paramount. And that's when he was assigned The you, Godfather. You follow the track of what it took to make The Godfather, how it, how he got Coppola on, how he got uh, the script, how it saved Paramount. How uh, Puzo how the, was a, a perpetual screw-up. Yes. How um, how the mob okay. was involved. It's, it's not a mafia story. It's a story of- It's a documentary of the of making of the movie. Production. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's the kid from Whiplash that's correct, in this, Correct, correct. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and then they had- uh, Who was the congressman who got- uh, it's, Oh, geez. In, in New York, he was famous, famous, famous. How, how is essentially the mob- and Amato? No, not a mod. <laughs> not a mod. No, just kidding. But Chelly or Alphonse Damato. Damato. Oh, I, I, I'm I'm messing it up. I, I'm I'm not doing it justice. I I'm letting you know as as a man who didn't grow up watching The Godfather and finally right. watched it with my father what three years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching 
Like, you don't have to be a Godfather fan to watch this series. You have to be just a fan of television and, and getting, movies, getting and, stuff done, and to see how yeah. something can be made. I'm not up well, to I'll the I'm out. not up to the Brando part yet, but they've got a pretty good guy playing Frank Sinatra, and they've also got the guy who plays Pacino is pretty yeah. chilling. He's got the voice down; he kind of looks like him too. So well, it's great. I was up. I was obsessed with my own little series this weekend because you know my comedy hero of all time is George Carlin, and uh, there is a new documentary out uh, that is all about uh, George. Watch and, it. Uh, it's called George Carlin's mm-hmm. American Dream. Long. At Two least parter. episode one was long. Two parter. Uh, and just you realize what this guy, uh, you know, with the. I'm not sure that this many famous celebrities, movies, actors, what have you go through as many reinventions as George Carlin yeah. did. And it's really amazing to watch. I mean, George Carlin, is, you know, he was around for a very, very long time. People don't realize and it. late in life became kind of this counterculture guy and just the story about him. But the great thing about watching a documentary about George Carlin, when they're talking about his upbringing and his tough uh, you know, uh, mom situation and his father situation and all the ups and downs that he had. They pepper it with the clips that always still make me laugh. I mean, George Carlin was funny to me from from uh, the absolute beginning. And I didn't real. I thought my, my feeling about George Carlin was I thought he was the suit and tie Ed Sullivan kind of guy. Right. Then he made the pivot to uh, the beard and the long hair and kind of the revolutionary persona, I didn't realize that he had another dip after that. I was never aware, at least in my mind, that uh, his popularity had dipped after all the albums, the success of the albums, Seven Dirty Words You Can't Say on right. TV, that he'd had to do it again. And that's kind of where we are now uh, with, with the episode have got, one. Have I you think... watched both of them, Oscar, the uh the I've watched both of them. As a as a kid who didn't discover Carlin until my late twenties, isn't that crazy? It is. That's crazy. Yeah, but it was my era, so I mean, I, I was, it makes sense to me. I was. The thing is, Carlin never did Sabado Gigante. I uh, Sabado Gigante. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Buenos he, Dias. He was never <laughs> on with Don Francisco. Um, my my take was that he was um he was such a such a loving man compared to the to the Carlin that I saw on television. Like he was. Like he was, he was in love and beloved by so many people. Yeah, and, and for uh, someone in, with in such love, an edge, love at, least, at least when the substances weren't around. Yeah, correct. correct you know correct, that correct, that was correct, he correct. almost took himself out because uh, of the uh, substances. I have I just, have both quick, episodes. Oh, you go I ahead. I just want to clarify: it's Congressman Mario Biaggi. Uh, during Biaggi the, okay. during okay. that time. Just um, okay. I right. have both of the Carlin episodes in my DVR. I planned on watching them tonight. You said it's already it's clip rich. Did they get? I'm curious when you talk about that mid-career dip. Is that before or after he did this? He was on the first episode of Saturday Night Live, and that had he was to be the first yeah. uh, guest host of Saturday. That Night has Live. to was that on his way up or on his way down? Just on so his I can, way up, his peak. His way up. His okay, peak. all right. And then, and then you know, it just uh, you know maybe the thing about uh, George Carlin was this attitude of. I don't want to call it trivializes it to call it a work ethic. It was more it was more of a dedication to his art form. Was it an to an be the obsess- best that it was he an could obsession. be? An obsession. An obsession to uh y- y- it's hard to think of taking comedy that seriously. But George Carlin's attitude about his art was was very very dedicated. He wanted to be not necessarily the most famous guy in the room, but he wanted to be relevant. Yeah. And he wanted to create memorable work. And he was aware, he listened to his critics, which I think we probably all do. Uh, and he wanted to make that kind of thing uh, stick. It was You don't get that dedication in most uh, stand-up comedians no. or actors or anything else. He wanted to do that. And then you realize that when you look back at his career, I haven't seen part two yet. That, yeah, he came on strong again with the HBO see, specials and it. everything else. And part I, two, I, I you can't, get, you get, yeah. because my favorite part 
of George Carlin is the last part. I, I love it. The I, angry old I man. I love George Carlin through. I thought he was fantastic. I thought he was just and a, what he never, spectacular. What he never lost, and you don't even realize it unless you start watching for it, is his precision of word use mm -hmm. is amazing. You well, never, that was his thing. Semantics were his bag. I man. mean, That's he never he stammers. He never stumbles. And I bet right. if you were to look at a performance at the beginning or end of a tour, you would hear, you could probably sync up. Because he is so precise. You take one of his his bits, I mean, a classic bit, like stuff, where he's like, you got to get a place for your stuff. Yeah. It is so precisely mm -hmm. structured all the way through. And when something is so well done like that, you don't hear it. What you hear I is when him. someone messes up. Uh, he's the comedian I miss all the time. Yeah. I really do when I think about George Carlin, my uh, absolute comedy hero, uh, because of words and sounds and, and the way he could do it with his facial expressions. Mm. The whole package, and I can't wait to watch uh, part two. It's called uh, George Carlin's American Dream, if you want to check it out. Lots of good stuff floating around right now on the old uh, Tubaroo, and lots of good stuff coming up here. we got the homepage coming up next right here, and I'm going to need that level up in my uh, ears. Okay. Are you playing something? Okay, thank you. Robert okay. Wood. No, not quite. I'm Robert Wood. I've got an amazingly large mouth. Eh, large mouth aside, that's still not quite it. <laughs> that poor man, He's all best. he does is make He's wonderful. Promise. I love the man. I'm making fun because He's I love. I kid guy. because I love. And I love you guys too, but you know, let's face it, there's only one... Robert Wood. <laughs> and there's only one TMOS bonus show. Subscribe today. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara <laughs> Show. Uh, are your family's memories trapped on old, mm. unwatchable yes. camcorder tapes or film reels? Legacy Box is the solution. Legacy Box is a super simple mail-in service. And if you've got it, uh, they can digitize it. Uh, Legacy Box can digitize 19 different types of media. I didn't know there were 19 yeah. different types of media. Uh, VHS tapes to Super 8 film. To preserve all of your treasured moments, each item is hand digitized by a team of over 200 trained technicians right here in the USA. And each kit includes everything you need to safely pack and send your recorded moments, including safety stickers for every item. Plus, their exclusive barcoded online tracking system provides up to 12 emailed updates along the way. We've all used it. I converted actual film from the 1950s. It looks amazing. Easy, Oscar right? Oscar and Rob yeah. converted their videotapes before they disintegrated, and now they're safe forever. Get started future-proofing your memories today so you can gather the family and begin the trip down memory lane. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to get an incredible 40% off your first order. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer, then send it in when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS and save 40% while supplies last. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the home page. Uh, this weekend, Saturday Night Live season finale was also the finale for four of its major players. Pete Davidson, Kate McKinnon, A.D. Bryant, and Rob, I'm really sorry, Kyle Mooney. Yay! Yay! Kyle Mooney is going. Uh, Kate started off the show. I watched this clip. Uh -huh. It's the only thing I watched. Uh, with one of the classic alien <laughs> abduction sketches, yep. which is just... She's so it's all her, and she's just being funny. Uh, it ended with her character climbing back into a UFO for good. Before the door closed, she said, "Quote, well, Earth, I love you. Thanks for letting me stay a while." Live from New York, it's Saturday night, and she was all yeah. emotional uh, with that. So, uh, who? That's a big hole to fill. Yeah, one of the greatest cast members ever in the history of Saturday. It was night great. Uh, Pete Davidson, I'll have it in the audio vault. Had a very, very funny goodbye during update. And A.D. Bryant got a tearful send-off during update. And Kyle Mooney not mentioned. Really? He didn't get anything. It was great. <laughs> it was so tasty and savory. So you watched the whole thing? I always uh, do, yeah. That's cool. All yeah. right, very, very good. Uh, Carrie Underwood was supposed to be on last night's American Idol Oscar, but she couldn't because of COVID exposure. Mm. There it is. Rearing its ugly it's head everywhere. all over the country. A member of her crew was exposed, so uh, due to safety protocols, she wasn't allowed to perform. Carrie wrapped her Vegas residency on Saturday, so it's possible the exposure happened there. 
While we're on the subject, Carrie made a bride to be's night uh, with one of those Vegas shows. The girl's name, uh, Nicole, and it was her bachelorette party. So Carrie invited her up on stage to sing All American Girl. Uh, it's a video that's making the rounds right now. Uh, Nicole admits she can't sing and then proves it, but uh, she sang her heart out and Carrie gave her huge props. By the way, in case you missed this Vegas run, you'll have another chance. Carrie shared a pic of her two little boys wearing reflection jackets and she captioned it, we'll be back, hashtag 2023. Oh, that wouldn't be a bad residency no. to go see. Mike, international news update. Julia just texted me. Oh, she yes. is on her plane, and this is the quote from my uh, from my phone. The little German boy is kicking my seat. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, so next stop, uh, Florence, right? No, she's right. still oh, got to go to Frankfurt. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, good luck to her. Hope she goes well. This is so dumb, it can't possibly be true, right? Have you tried the hanger challenge yet? It's a no. thing that's happening on TikTok. I don't know are about you, this. It happens at the hanger, of it? the hanger Club in Maryland, right? I was going to bring it in. I Maybe we could do it tomorrow. Okay. I don't think it's going to hurt by... Uh, all you do is you take a coat hanger, you wedge your head in it, so the hook points to one side. Okay. Like to the side of your head. Yeah. Then you close your eyes, and your head will involuntary start involuntarily start turning. That's all it is. Uh, most people who've tried it are shocked when it actually works, and there's some science to back it up. It's a real thing called hanger reflex that was first documented in 1991. A study in 2015 tried it on 120 people, and it worked on 96% of them. For some reason, your head tends to want to turn away from the hook. Scientists don't know why it happens, but it's not just about seeing the hook in your peripheral vision. In one study, researchers built a ridiculous-looking hat to test different pressure points on people's heads. Uh, they were able to recreate the coat hanger reflex with it, so apparently it has something to do with uh, that, but I don't This know. Uh, This is so. when epidemiologists look back at uh, this era in public health, and they wonder how monkeypox got back into the population. Yeah, exactly. It's, Slipped it's, in the back door? Yeah, it's because of this BS. Yeah. yeah it's well, this you, stuff. The average American, take them to, uh, to a, a doctor or an emergency room with something and to have them then try to explain it, you know, what the doctor said to them. And have them try to explain it to the other fam family members. They can. And you get, you know, I don't know, but it was just like he's got a big swell thing that's happening down. And you know, that's what that's yeah. what we are now. We don't pay attention to the details. I we tried the hanger challenge, but I use pants hangers with the clip. <laughs> with the <laughs> clip on your ears. Yeah, <laughs> just got a painful ear. That's all. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, moving right along, uh, not the same story in a row. As you probably know, Britney Spears. She occasionally posts. Uh, Nude photos, yes, semi regularly. I, uh, I've been taking those in. She still uh, is very fit. She looks very good. Uh, well, her latest one has people thinking that uh, she had quite the Photoshop fail. Oh, uh, I looked at the photo. This is a photo of her. She's standing in a doorway. The door is open, and you can see where the outline of the door appears to be semi. Uh, warped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, she's standing. The, uh, the 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 part that's next to her tummy appears warped. Uh, her tummy also appears to be brushed with a smudge tool to appear flatter. Mm. Uh, unless the door is oddly shaped, it does appear she did a little fixing. Uh, some of the things people said were, "Quote, girl, you got to stop the Photoshop. At least don't have a bent door." Uh, <laughs> and quote. I've always been intrigued by doors that don't form a perfect rectangle. <laughs> it feels so picasso in <laughs> I so. use a smudge tool, but not in Photoshop, just in real life. <laughs> that's, that's your smudge tool that you... We don't want to go <laughs> no, into No, we don't. It's disgusting. It's pretty disgusting. But, <laughs> you know what, Brittany? Thanks for the nudes. Keep posting them. Yeah. She's not going to do it now because people are so cruel. Well, Next to her cat in the hat door. Be better about, right. be better about your, uh, your Photoshop. Hire yeah, somebody. Absolutely. Uh, and now a little something, something. There is a 21-year-old man in Ohio. His name is Nathan Miller. He was charged with DUI back on Saturday, May 14th. He was behind the wheel or whatever it is, or the the reins yeah. of an Amish buggy with a horse. Oh, no. <laughs> and he was going down the wrong side of the road. A uh, cop and a local deputy caught up with it, uh, tried to get in front of the buggy to block it. But as it barreled past them, the officers saw that Nathan was drunk and passed out 
uh, in the buggy. Uh, it finally slowed down, and that's when the officers tried to board the buggy and get control of the horse. That didn't work. The horse lunged forward. I saw the video of this. And the buggy crashed into a deputy's cruiser. Oh, no. <laughs> Not good for the uh, drunk Amish guy. No. Eventually, Nathan, ye old Nathan, yes. uh, was arrested. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt, although Nathan was treated at the scene for minor injuries. Uh, he was able to post bail, which consisted of an ear of corn, a milking stool, and a butter churn. Thank you. <laughs> Amish humor. That's a little Amish humor for you, everybody. Maybe hey, we'll he was on his Rumspringer. Yes, Rumspringer. We'll take a little break and we'll come back with uh, more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mary Show. I got big news for you, people. It's coming up next. You're going to love it right here. You got to turn that up so I can hear it. Maybe sometime before the show's up. Thank you. What if I told you there was one man unlike any other? What if I told you there was one man who wanted all the fans? What if I told you that the fan man with everything could lose it all? What if I told you that Dan the fan man couldn't be happy until he got his Dan the fan hands on every fan that his Dan the fan hands could handle? Listen to the Michael Marabona Show to hear the whole story on Dan the fan man, overcoming his addictions to methamphetamines and getting to the top, now airing on ESP Fan. Oh, Dan the Fan Man. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mary Show. I am not a monster, but there are certain routines that I am very particular about. For example, don't mess with my morning routine. Mm, routine. Uh, I know what I like, and everything I like involves the amazing products from Harry's. Yay. Harry's, Harry's, Harry's. So glad they're still advertising with us. I love Harry's. I use it all every morning. Razor, face wash, body wash, the best shave gel I've ever put on my f- face. <laughs> And blades that stay sharp so long, I swear you won't know when to change them. Uh, I've had my blade in the shower, I think, since the 1960s. Yeah, they don't I get... I swear to you. Just like this show, Mike, they never get dull. They never get old. Uh, and how about this? First time Harry's customers can redeem a starter set for just three bucks at harrys.com slash tmos that includes a five blade cartridge a weighted handle foaming shave gel and a travel cover to protect your blades on the go a 13 dollars value all for just three dollars and wait till you try the newly designed handle i can't believe Love they bested yes. my original the original Harry's handle. It feels so good in your hand. It feels so good. Are you going to love it? Nice. I can't wait to shave again. Again, I am not a monster. I just have impeccable taste. Harry's taste. Remember, new look, same incredible offer. There's really never been a better time to give Harry's a try. Just go to harrys.com slash TMOS today to get your starter set for just $3. That hair, that's harrys.com slash TMOS. Uh, so when we came back from our little uh, soiree to the traditional Italian restaurant, yeah. um, I don't want to say that Mrs. O'Mara was a tad overserved, but we have our bad meal. Was it was it wine for her? No. Uh, well, there was wine involved, along oh. with a with an adult beverage. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, and so she was, and then. Um, I'm not proud of this, and I probably shouldn't be saying this in front of you, Rob. Right. Now that you're modifying your behavior. But, oh, yeah, the uh, liver you know, failure. Life goes on. Um, yeah. <laughs> life life goes on. Yes. Yeah. Not, not his liver. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, Parts of it are doing fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's some unscarred stopped, liver. We were so festive, we stopped to get a gallon of margaritas for Sunday at, uh, at Iguana <laughs> a gallon. Because they have, well, they have a drive-thru where you can this get a, a gallon of margaritas. This is such an altered by alcohol purchase. It is. is. A, you know what it we is. need for tomorrow? Yeah. Still in the freezer. We haven't been touched. We, we should get Strangely a gallon. Strangely enough, nobody touched anything on Sunday. Yeah. It was uh, interesting. <laughs> and, uh, Touch the Excedrin. <laughs> so I am, by the way, when since I got the ball python, Jake the Snake, yes. for my son, I have been the primary caretaker. He doesn't touch it. It's mm-hmm. my. It's really my pet, like mm-hmm. they all are most mm-hmm. of the time. And uh, the prime director from Carla is, don't 
Get it away from me. Get it away. I don't want to see it. It's disgusting. It's nasty. It's horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just constant. I take the snake out all the time. I uh, wrap it around my neck. Please don't take any of these things. Don't keep any of these things out of context. Yeah. I, I, I keep <laughs> it in its enclosure. I, I clean up its poop. Yeah. I feed it mice. I, I am the it. caretaker. I, yeah. how I bad like is, him. I think how he's bad got is, a personality. How bad is snake scat? Uh, boo, boo. It's scat. It's definitely there. It's right. a it's a larger animal. So uh, yeah, it, but it's a you know I he exists. The floor of his enclosure uh, is paper towels. Okay. So you just basically wrap He's up the paper towels to it. Put new ones down, and uh, and now he's taken to crawling under the paper tile towels because they like to hide. Yeah. They're always about hiding. That's what they want to do. But I take care of this creature, and Carla's like, oh God, oh. Even to the point of if, like, I bring it into the laundry room while she's doing laundry, I'm like, here's a little friend who wants to say, stop it, stop it, get it away, stop it. He's looking uh, at you. <laughs> so uh, to my surprise, as I came home from dinner, and by the way, what, what appears to be like midnight to us is, is like 8.30, all right? It's just it's the time schedule we're on. Yeah. It's That's late at night. We've had a few adult beverages sure. with dinner, and it's just... <clears throat> but, uh, uh, and she walks out, and there, there's Jake in her hands. Oh, in she the did the palm it, of her hand. Did it on she's, her own. She's carrying the snake. She's carrying the snake. The next morning, nothing. She didn't want to go near it again. So you want to touch it again? Do you want to touch the snake again? And he's gotten bigger, by the way. He's getting, he's getting How bigger. How big? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I could get him. Yeah, let's yeah, get, get him. him. Do get it. Him. Pad. He's yeah. right next door. Yeah. He's right next door. He's taping a special. <laughs> taping a special. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you ever had a bizarre pet? I mean, I know you've had dogs. You've oh, had, I a, had cat. a hamster as a kid. That, well, it depends on what you do with them, is whether no, or not they're no, bizarre. No, no, it's just very sweet. Yeah, I yeah, never... but I've never. I had friends that had chinchillas. I had friends that had snakes. I had, you know, uh, what is the? What's the? It's 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 not a gopher. It's uh, Jesus Christ. Groundhog. Yeah, like a, not a, not a hedgehog. 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 Yeah, hedgehog. Oh, they curl up. Yeah, I've never had anything from the rodent family. Yeah, You've and then dogs there's, and there cats. was one creep we knew growing up that had uh, these marsupials that fly around. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! What a creep! Yeah, mm. he still has really him. Pervert. He, he had, sounds like a jerk. He had two at once. Yeah, uh, he got two for one sale. And, and did he keep both of them? Not one. Mm. Tried to keep, but it died. Oh, yeah, it that's tough. sad, right? Yeah, so yeah. sad. Mm. Same as Pony Boy. Was it? Was it an aviation accident? <laughs> no, I'm so sorry, Pony. In that control with the tower. Look at that snake. Oh wow! Good video day. Yeah, oh, wow. it's gotten much bigger. He's gotten much bigger. He has. He's he's gotten. Much Look bigger. at and that. He's gotten thicker. Thicker. Yeah. I have a sickness. Yeah, for the he thickness. was like he was like before he was like a kid's uh, inner tube for a tire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's like a big wheel. A good analogy. Yeah, Oscar. Like that. <laughs> now I can almost see it. Yeah, look at him, man. That, oh that wow, is, wow. Mean, this is and this not is wild. Just it's still a little creepy when yeah. he moves like that. I can yeah. I can see your your fascination with it, but it's it's a little yeah. weird. He, man. he he's coiled right he now. He does look. Mike's he hand. looks vicious. There he is. Yeah, he does. He looks vicious. I would not. In, I would not bother him in yeah. nature. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Man, he's got some abs. Look at that. Yes, he's cut. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so quiet, Mike? You can't talk with Jake's around. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't upset the snake. <laughs> I just get fascinated by him. Yeah, yeah. he's he's, now, he's awesome. Does he ever still go around your neck? Yep. Yeah. yeah you, why don't you let him uh, get uh, get around that thing? Yeah. Not for too long, of course. Not no. for too long. Then Mike really will be quiet. Yeah, hey, Mike's putting. This no, is this is go. just like on, in the WWE when Jake the Snake would walk on exactly right mm -hmm. and put have a snake yeah, completely see, I around his neck. Yeah, usually keep him down near my lap. Yes, right. naturally. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, he's very nice. Yeah, well, he he's called a ball python, right? And he's doing his ball. It's a ball thing. python because they like to uh, doing his ball thing. They like oh, to get up man. and ball. Yeah. In your life, did you ever think you'd have a cool snake like this? No, I never really was had any real interest. So cool. Yeah. Do you think this is going to sound stupid? Do you think he recognizes you when you like see him? Oh, like I, this oh, is the food guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> is that usually how you hang out with him? You're watching TV and he's just hanging out on top of you. I, I would love, love for you to love, go to I Mike has the co the snake coiled on his head. I'd love for you to go to the golf course like yeah. that. Hey guys, hi fellas. Jake wanted to come out and play. Let's just let him hang out at the first tee for a while. See what happens.
Okay, now he's going around his yeah. neck. It's weird to watch him sort of unfold him because he's not like a pipe cleaner. He's a real deal. I like how Mike is almost enticing him. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, uh, you're seducing your own snake. That's... Well, I just wanted to uh, make sure that he was- uh, Comfortable? Comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. This he is looks fantastic. Great. This right is now great. he's around Mike's neck. I'm blown and, uh, away here. His head is on your, I guess, left shoulder? I am blown away. Is he more of an AM or FM talk guy? Uh, he's a he's a PM guy. PM oh, uh, nighttime yeah. always crawling down my back. Yeah, right. but that's what you like. <laughs> right? Right. No. He's stuck to something. Oh, oh no! Oh, dear. oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh no! I don't know what he's, he's crawling oh, down. He's oh, he just fell. He falling. just fell. That's not fun for him. Oh no! No, he's on the chair. He's on the chair. Don't, don't oh move, my god! Don't, don't move too. too he's quickly. under your headrest. He's behind. Don't lay back. Oh, that is so cool. Wow! He's wedged himself between the headrest and the chair right now. He literally said goodbye to Mike and said, I'm going to hang out on this chair yeah, and wrapped himself around the chair. Unless he puts on WMAL-FM, yes. I'm staying here. Yes. Oh, and he is coiled tight. Man. Yeah. Uh, want... Didn't Rush sell a chair at one point? Off the microphone? <laughs> yeah, lightly used. <laughs> right? <laughs> it had some, it showed spots of wear. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He's like, I oh, don't want to leave the chair. He, he likes doesn't want to leave it. He He's holding on. The show. He's like, no, this is great. It's a cool piece of steel. I'm in. Yeah, I'm all in. Man. He is, he is, he is so I'm wrapped around the chair. Yes. Yeah, we see. He is so wrapped around the chair. <laughs> what? Did you just smell him? Yeah, that's yeah, really strange. Like... <laughs> Mike, are you, uh, are, you, are you sure you're a tucked in shirt type of guy these days? Like, <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Mike has that. left. Now we're just left with the snake. Mike has left. He went to a crowbar. Yeah, if the snake could do voices, <laughs> then we'd have something. Pony, what are your thoughts? I think he's going to need an Allen wrench to get the back of that seat off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. Well, he You're tried right. to remove the snake, and the chair actually spun. For those yeah. of you at home, Mike has left. The, oh, oh, now, now he's Mike back. has now returned. He's back. Yeah. The snake is behind Mike. <laughs> I'm just going to leave him there. Okay. I think he's, he's happy. He's comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As long as he doesn't what, go now, a little up tight. How does the, how does the smell? Because you didn't. I did. You ammonia. You, oh, mm. oh, like mm. like snake pee. Yeah. Mm. Do you think he got excited to be on the I air? I think he did. <laughs> I just hope it's not on my neck. Yeah. Oh, Pony no. does the same thing. There is a little wet <laughs> spot on it. the right of you. We can tell just a little bit. What, uh, here? In the, yeah, right around there. No, we, I don't <laughs> see it. Yeah. What's the matter with you? BSing me. Stop it. <laughs> no, look at it. It's a little darker than the rest. I think it's just the lighting. Is all to, to tell that to his friends when he sees them later. Hey, Johnny Ammonia. Hey, you take a shower today, Omara? What's going on? Yeah, hey, uh, I'm fine. Yeah, it's delightful. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> right, this is a new musk. <laughs> Snake number five. Yeah. My wife, my wife got me a new cologne. It's too musky, I think. Oh, we gotta take a break. I'm yes, sorry. We I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to uh, oh. check on him. I, I should not have done this. This is a no. That's the best right. thing you could have done. Thank you. The best thing I could have done. Thank you. It's a weird show. <laughs> Low energy show. Anyway, uh, we'll let uh, we'll just walked around with a snake. Are you kidding that's me? That's right. I did. We'll be right nice. back with more fun. I don't know what to do. I've got a snake that's like fused to my chair. The Lord loves you. That's why you cry. Buseyisms. A dog eating grass means the holidays are here. Buseyisms. A broken rake is a kitchen necessity. If you know the secret, Buseyisms. Hello, dear people. This is Gary Busey. I played Buddy Holly, but now I offer wisdom. Do you have thoughts you want to share? Then you should be a TMOS talking head. Just email Rob at MikeOmeraShow.com and you can find yourself on a Zoom call with the three wise men of TMOS. Include a phone number and get ready for fun. TMOS talking heads. More fun than a Cincinnati margarine rally with extra red hots. Buseyisms. I swear to God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, he'll it eventually. Is so wrapped when around you tried, you you stood up during the break to try to remove him, and when you pulled on him, his tongue came out. Does that mean he's getting upset? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. In order to calm inflation fears, the Feds have ordered snakes. No, the snakes. Feds have raised rates with the largest single jumps in. 
2000. So what does this mean for you, Pachango? Uh, well, you'll probably need a mortgage loan in the future, yes. divorce, pregnancy, kids move away, uh, retirement, kids move back, parent moves in. All of these situations, plus many more, may indicate a need for a loan. Uh, when that happens, take my advice and call my friend Mark Livingstone and his team at Cornerstone First Financial. Uh, whether a purchase or refinance, you need to work with a company you can absolutely trust. Mark and his team make sure that uh, you're the best prospect to a potential seller and obtain the lowest interest rate, all while giving you white glove concierge service. Call Cornerstone First Financial, voted one of the top 1% of mortgage lenders by Washingtonian Magazine and the number one choice of TMOS listeners, call 202-625-1221. That's 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Thank you, Cornerstone First Financial. All right. Well, here we are. Back to uh, back to what we're doing. I here. think you're I'm safe sorry. with him. I've there. never he, been more distracted. During this reminds me. He's not going to do anything. Remember, he wants to stay there. Remember when you had the instant feedback machine on WJFK? Yes. And you were doing the show, Look but also hair, ans- answering instant feedbacks mm-hmm. yes. in the middle What's of- What's the instant feedback? What's uh, well, the no. instant- Remember re- you had a computer that would people could comment as the show was going on. And you would never look away from the computer. You'd be in the middle of an interview. You'd be like, hold on a second, Johnny4567, <laughs> let me tell you this about this. And in real time, you're answering all the yeah, hate mail. Yeah, I know I'm distracted. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I, well, it just, I didn't expect him to immediately go to the- he, but Back he's of this and wrap around it, and I'm not. I'm wondering when I'm going to get him off of this thing. So, can anyway. you entice it? Does he? Does he get treats? I know that might be no. Rob, Jake, he's not like Jake a dog. The snake for Christ's has sake. turned into our modern day Beth A and McBride. Have that a good she's show. Ruining the show. Show stop. Ruining the show. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, let me. All right. So, well, we, we, I have Julia back in Europe. We got yes, rid of yeah, that. We got exactly. rid of Oscar's back from COVID. Yes. Right. We're back from that. Yeah, so, no. what else do I have? Right. I, uh, I mean, I'm doing the best well, I can. Well, you look, know what listen, I mean? We have a lot to get to. You right. just need to decide if you're going to. Whether be okay. I'm going to focus on the well, show, yeah, yeah, I'll be focusing on the show. Why can't you just rip that snake right off that? that piece because of- you can't rip a snake off because he's a living creature. Spray, you him, with some, spray him with some Windex. Or raid. I'm not going to spray. I'm not going to spray him with any Windex. You. That's pet abuse. That's no. I don't mean like that. Just like you. no, just a water or something. A spray of some yeah, sort. Yeah, like you know, fine. a mister. I'm just trying uh, yeah. to get the ammonia off of him. What about some pledge? Uh, excuse me, mister. Fine. Do we need to Every- stop down so you can <laughs> cleanse? <laughs> Everything's uh, all. <laughs> All I wanted to say was that I was very happy that, uh, you know, Carla finally touched the snake. And then she went back the morning after, I guess when clearer heads prevailed, she went back to not wanting to touch him anymore. And I love the guy. I think he's got a personality. I think he's actually quite a uh, wonderful pet. I think he's super chill. You feed him once a week. He's, you know, he's relaxed. He's fine. He likes to curl up in a ball. And I think I stressed him out uh, when I when I tried to kind of manhandle him a little bit. And then when he got wrapped around this thing, he's safe. And he's yeah. doing fine on that. And they like to be up in trees sometimes. So that's where he's there. Mm. Where is he? He's is there. He there. I see him. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mike, All this right. is I'm kind of checking. like the plot of the uh, old Charlie Chaplin movie. I believe it's called City Lights, mm-hmm. where yes. a rich guy is only friends with the tramp when he's drunk. You know what? Thanks for your timely reference. So, I really appreciate that. I mean, but this that. is, this is the same. I love your timely. Does it ever change? Do you ever watch it? The, 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 the tramp? The tramp back in the, the 1920s. Little tramp. Lady, yeah. lady in the tramp? No, no, no. But Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> no. But, but go the, way back further than that. No, one, I believe yeah. all of his stuff is about to hit public domain. That's how old it is. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. Maybe now when she's drunk, she'll be friends with the snake. But right. when she's sober, not. I am a pet centric. This is a pet centric household. Right. You we have are two very, dogs. I. This is the first time uh, in my adult life. And I've lived many, many years where I really focus on the animals and their welfare. And I, uh, you know, back in the day, I left it to the other adults in the household. Well, you which also didn't have time. Woman. You had ratings books to worry about. Exactly. I did. Well, you know, <laughs> I still care about people listening to the show. I, wait, is he indicating in his little dickish way that I'm like not focusing on the show today and I'm paying attention to a snake? I brought the snake in for your entertainment. I and love then it that wrapped you around a thing, and now I'm worried about it. No, he he's never been happier. Look at him. Yeah, he's never been he's happier. Chilling. That's he fun. loves talk yes. radio. I care about this show. I was saying somebody uh, the other day. I still have my competitive juices that are uh, at an all time high. I still want. Do to your garner competitive more- juices smell like ammonia? 
They smell like uh, a snake's ass. <laughs> I don't know what that. I Just still don't want back. I want more. I want more, more, more. Yes. I want more people to listen to this yes. show. Yes. I care. Yes. I care desperately. You know, you I mean, should. that's why. I, that's uh, Why should I? What does that mean? Because that if you don't care, how can we care? Well, you know I yeah, care. Yeah, you're the leader of the pack. Mm-hmm. You know I care, right? Yeah, I we're mean, a you... wolf pack, just yes. like in The Hangover. Yeah, that's us, exactly. <laughs> I care. I truly I'm do I'm Jack care. Black. It's just been a weird <laughs> Jack show. Jack Black's not even in The Hangover. <laughs> He's not in The oh, Hangover. Oh, no, 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 I'm thinking, who's the guy with the beard then? Galifianakis. Then? I'm Zach Galifianakis, forgive me. I, Brain misfire. I care, I care, and, and now that we've all made it through our little health uh, issues uh, with COVID. Issues. And in Rob's case, uh, you know, I think that, you, that my desire is that everybody will continue to care. Yes. And in some cases, maybe care more. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether we that's We had a big uh, up our happen. game conversation over over the break, uh, Rob and I, as usual, um, where I, you know, I, I think that this year is the year of Spiewak. And and we're gonna bring no, this more... year is the year of monkeypox. Yeah, uh, you're I'm right, gonna you're take right, 23. Right. 23 right, is yeah, yeah, gonna be the. We're year gonna set week. up Rob this year. Oh, for did next you just year. did you just wipe out 2022 with that comment? <laughs> no, no, not at you all. You just just not blow not it off in that. Not way. But you, it's the way your brain works, though. It's like you <laughs> you don't even realize it when your brain psychologically is saying, "What can I say that will diminish this and move?" No, forward? I was trying to make a joke. Let's set expectations. I now, monkeypox. Monkey Fox. I and let's be serious for two it's seconds. It's nothing here. to laugh at. Do you feel, Mike? Mm-hmm. Like what? And and be honest here. What do you feel is more? I guess what's scarier for you as just a, just general a Joe population that you're? Is it the COVID? Is it the monkey pox? Or is it politics? Like through all those three. I'll give you my priorities oh, yeah. rank now. Them, if you're, if them, you're yeah. acting, uh, you know, if you're asking me to rank those, yeah. I uh, am more often than not unsubscribing to political emails and political texts. Mm. I am moving forward. I do not engage nearly as much as I used to. Uh, when an election comes, I know I will ramp it up. That happens automatically sure. with me, you know, almost in a sporting way. But and I still will occasionally donate to a candidate that I like, but I am also in a situation where I believe there's a level of futility right now that we are in a situation that that it's going to be what it's going to be. So that's at number uh, three. Uh, so politics is in the back burner. Monkeypox is not relevant because that's not relevant at all. I think that's I remember yeah, that's when I said that about COVID. That's a no, I think, but but COVID, uh, I think about all the time. COVID, yeah. I think about e- every day. Should my son get the booster? Uh, should we mask when we go to Disney in a couple of weeks? Um, that type of thing. That's always on my mind. Um, and I, I tend to bitch to those closest to me about the state of American affairs right now because I just feel that we live in a country now where. Truth is so irrelevant to what people's perceptions are, and it, it just, I don't know if there's coming back from this anytime soon. It's very, it, very frustrating. And then when I look at my own team, Oscar, yes. I have to be very, very honest with you. I thought when it I look was at my our own team. team. Uh, our team, it's all uh, our team yeah. I will say well, our team. Not, I look at our pony. team, and I look at the not. way the Democrats are handling, handling things, and the last thing I checked, uh, you know, uh, things aren't going all that great. And I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with uh, the inflation. I'm not happy with gas prices. I'm not happy with COVID not being put to bed. Not that I think government is completely capable of this, but this feeds into the nonstop drumbeat of hate on the other side, where they just, they have their social issues and they're going to focus on that forever. There are no proposals, by the way, on the other side of how they do it better. We, it's just it goes on and on. Well, they so have that am, they have that luxury because they're not in power. They can definitely throw. But where stones. I am now would be a significant uh, current events malaise. Mm. I am down about it. 
I, I distract myself from it. I try not to think about it. That's where I am. Mm-hmm. Well, look, true. this is timely. If I'm not mistaken, Wednesday, it looks like, Mike, uh, we're going to have Reed Galen on the show. Yes. From the oh, I'd Project love to talk to Reed. To get his love perspective, right? Ta- yeah. Yeah, because the, the midterms are just around yes. the corner. So, you know, it's uh, it's terrible. For me, it's it, it's 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 both. Um, and, and and I guess if 1A, uh, 1A, 1B, is that the right term? Yeah. Uh, where... Going through COVID, getting out on the other side, and just managing the all the iter, the machinations of coming back to work and being in a highly populated city without too much outdoor space where everybody's hanging out. Right? right if I right. was in California or Florida, I could see how psychologically you're like, ah, oh, we'll just go outside and hang out in the backyard, right? Yeah. When there's space, right? But when you're in an office building, you start thinking about things a certain way, and then the other side of it is. It, it, the inflation, the pricing, I think that that all hits you every day. Filling up at the gas tank, Mike. Brutal. I mean, what, what's what's your latest fill up like per per? Went to Costco. Uh, was four thirty eight a gallon. Yes, cheaper than up here, right? Yeah. Well, it's cheaper because it's at Costco. 80, is yeah, it yeah. eighty eighty dollars? What do you pay? Ninety dollars per, per fill up. Uh, if I go from uh, the bottom of the tank yes. all the way up, I'm up uh, near seventy bucks. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Right. Seventy bucks. What was it before? Oh God! I could I could fill my tank for bottom dry, bone dry for fifty bucks. Yeah. yeah. You go out to a restaurant now. There is a twenty percent upcharge, just yep. for service. Mm-hmm. Right. That is not the tip. It's built yeah. in. That is not the tip. It's insane. Like, yeah. how are people going out? How and it, the, the economy, a broader issue of the economy, and and um and how that's going to turn around just is something that. I'm not necessarily concerned about. I know mm-hmm. it will turn around. Like, Mike, how many times? Like, think about what we went through as a team here in 2008, 2009, the greatest recession of, of our country's history. We started a business. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then and then we had a the massive company that we relied on for one leg of our chair yeah. uh, to support this show that went, uh, and we're talking about Amazon here. Yes. I don't care about time. Yeah. Went, uh, F you podcast. Yeah. Yeah, F you. No, thank you. Uh, we're not going to, we're not going to do it anymore. And just like uh, with, without even a, I'm, a thought. I'm to, confident you know. we'll always, with the support of our listeners, but also with the, the will, I mean, really, and the work ethic to win and push ahead that, that we can get through this together. So, for me, it's more about. I think it, it goes. It goes to public health, but it also goes to who's at the helm of the public health arena, which is big government. You saw that yesterday on on sixty minutes about Ugh. pharma, the pharma community, and big and, pharma and, 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 not making drugs available that will save lives because they're not profitable yeah. enough. Mm. Cheap stuff that's been around for a while, but they just don't turn the incredible. And one of the ex- executives that was interviewed said, and I wrote it down here. Uh, made this comment where this I've heard this many many times before in uh, in our our society we're not a charity kiss my ass with your profits yeah. we're not a charity what happened you know I mean I know they're not dying, but what money. about the Hippocratic oath you know it's, yeah. yeah you're or, making money off the backs of people's lives yeah. or baby yeah. formula yeah but, like yeah. it's crazy can you imagine that we had watching a fl- the news now is an exercise yeah. in total depression. It is, you know, one hundred percent, and that's why Rob Spiewak's going to come back with a sound town and a new sound town sound. Yes. Uh, that's uh, that's actually going to uplift us, right? Yes. It's yes. going to be fabulous. I like it uh, very much. And otherwise, I uh, where's Jake? No, oh, stop it. He He's right where you left him. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was gone though? What if he bit me? The call is right. coming from within the house. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> The latest bonus show is chock full of hilarity that you'll need to turn the speakers up for. If you haven't heard it yet, here's what you missed. Turn his mid-range up. I can we play? <laughs> can we give him more bass? I'm going to kill you. What was it like working on the Golden Girls, Miss Arthur? Oh, man, they were boxed. <laughs> now turn his treble up a little bit. I just want a hula hoop. Springfield, Massachusetts is known for bringing in the talent. I had two idiots talking there to me. There were a lot of words in different places. I feel so smart. <laughs> The TMOS bonus show is that extra fifth that were funny trusted by Mr. Goodrich and his fellow mechanics nationwide. Get a subscription and have some laughs today at MikeOmeraShow.com. Please be careful. Don't get monkeypox. 
This portion of the Mike O'Mary Show brought to you by Dadgrass. Mellower vibes are just a drop or a toke away with Dadgrass. Dadgrass will take you back. Just sit back, light up, chill out the old-fashioned way. Sweet dreams are made of CBD. Mm, yes. Dadgrass is legal. It's organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. And if you want the toke without the smoke, Dodgrass is also available in a CBD tincture made with the same high-quality hemp. My it's go-to. easy to dose, and the effects come on smooth. Chill out without getting stoned. And now, all things must grass. Celebrate a classic bloke with a classic toke. What does that mean? No, keep you, uh, going. This is amazing because I don't know the last time the George Harrison estate has licensed his image to a company. You can now buy George Harrison dad grass. Special edition George Harrison pre-rolled joints or merch. Great for any Beatles fan who needs to chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I'm playing What Is Life. It's yeah. the 50th or the 51st anniversary of All Things Must Pass. And so all this George Harrison stuff is so, so cool because he's not like Paul. He doesn't put his name on anything. All Dad Grass products are federally illegal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, Dad Grass is offering TMOS listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS for 20% off your first order. Remember, man, that's dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Sound. 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 We call this stereophonic sound. Sound town. There you go. I like that. Fresh, like that fresh, fresh, fresh. Mm-hmm. I love when I get texts from Oscar that are just TikTok links over the weekend because yeah. I know he's bunny trailing and finding stuff, rabbit holing. And you did some music stuff. He sent me a great little documentary about the first Boston album that was really too long for the vault. But this is, I would say this baby DJ was literally like 13 years Mm -hmm. old, maybe. And he's got a good ear. He said that Lizzo's record, current record, sounds like Queen. And I said, I suppose, but he proves it. This is really cool. So I'm listening to About Damn Time by Lizzo. And I hear this. It's about damn time. In a minute, I'm going to need a sentimental man or woman to pump me up. The bass reminds me of Queen. It's like a dun 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 a dun 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 dun. dun, dun. What if I just like put them together? Pretty cool. No accident either. No. And what's cool, he doesn't bend the pitch. He doesn't change no. the tempo. That's an actual mix down of it. I wouldn't be surprised if they did a little digging and said, hey, you know Wait what? A second. That's sampled. What are you yeah, doing? It almost sounds sampled to me. It, does. it really does. It does. Smash right. hit, by the way. Oh, Man. great song. Good, good, good song. Now, what are you the, doing? What were you looking at? What's going on? What happened? What do you mean? I looked, looked over my your sheet. right shoulder. Yeah, to see my sheet, to see where we're at. Oh, okay. Right. Um, I like John Mulaney, although I think he might be a jerk in real life. However, I do like his comedy very much. What makes you think he might be a jerk? Uh, because he's, you know, he's, he's uh, got a kid. I don't think he's in a place in his life when he's battling addiction. He should have a child. And he makes fun of his addiction a little bit. I think he should take a little more. Uh, Aren't you going through your own troubles? Yeah, but I'm also not <laughs> building an entire uh, uh, comedy uh, bit about it. I yeah, mean, I, I can't, but I'm just saying, like, look. I've I, heard him comedy- also do long-term interviews where he's a little pompous. I mean, I just get that read. But you know what? So be it. He's extraordinarily yeah. funny. He's in recovery at the moment. Yeah, and Let's they see. did a special where they were saluting some of the great... It was a Netflix special. They were saluting mm-hmm. some of the great comics. I believe Carlin was mentioned, uh, Richard Pryor. This is something he said about Robin Williams that I really, really liked. People like to theorize that comedy all comes from a place of pain and sadness. And people like to talk about comedians as if we do what we do because of some inner darkness. And this is especially thrown around when discussing Robin Williams. And with all due respect, off with that. (laughs) Have a little respect for a brilliant artist who was just more talented than you. (laughs) 
I like that, you know, because uh, yeah. it, it gets it's a pretty overanalyzed. Valid point. It does. It gets overanalyzed. It, it does. But the, the the there's an irrefutable fact here that people who perform are broken <laughs> at yeah. a certain level. I yeah. Great comedian is admitted that. to that. Yeah, but it, but when it's overanalyzed, if anything's overanalyzed, you know, putting people there's so much speculation. We love, especially in the United States, to speculate on what's inside the mind of performers. Well, they don't do it for everyone. For example, I've never heard anyone wonder about what's going on with Al Roker. <laughs> He's broken too. Mike, where Probably. is Polk Ca- County as to where you live? Uh northern Florida. I okay, believe. so you won't run yeah. into this lady. She uh this is a sheriff, a very cutesy this sheriff. This lady in the McDonald's? Yeah, she flipped out. Okay, but I think right. that the best part about this is the police spokesman who is What what are you looking at? Uh just checking on my snake. Yeah, oh, okay. Sure snake's there. Okay, I because behind you. We can see him. We can see him just over your shoulder. Uh this lady flipped out cuz she got bad service at a McDonald's, but the sheriff spokesman is a little cutesy. They have it ready, but because it was a special order, they confused some things and they asked her pull up to window 3. We'll fix it for you really Winda. quick. Well, Winda. she got McMad. I'm at McDonald's. I'm 5 months pregnant. I want my money. They trying to treat me at my money. I don't know what was wrong with her that night. I don't know if she was like two fries short of a happy meal, but she created a McMess. <laughs> she pulled can you, her can shirt you pause off. it for a second? Yeah, go. of course. <laughs> Sheriffs down here yeah? <laughs> are bad news. Why? Let me tell you what. Because of this. Because <laughs> I don't think a, a chief law enforcement official that supervises people who have the potential to put a bullet between your eyes should be out doing their happy, happy shtick. We got one down here in Lee County. Yeah. These sheriffs like- have so much effing power. Yeah, and they get you get. I mean, you'll listen to this guy a few fries short of a McCaffrey meal. He sounds like Boss Hog. Yeah, he does. He does, and he's doing his shtick. And he, they, I just don't remember when law enforcement was anything other than talking about the crime and what they're doing. This reminds me of Joe Arpaio. Was it Arpaio? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that is perfect, Oscar. This is the Arpaio. Listen to this guy. Go on, do his. I'll go back a little bit so we can hear some more. I don't know what was wrong with her that night. I don't know if she was like two fries short of a Happy Meal, but she created a McMess. She pulls her shirt up. There you go. There's a little twerk on the way out the door. Hmm. There you go. She was very upset. Yeah, it's also a little... Uh, it's flip, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very yeah, racial yeah, undertone yeah, you know, yeah, pretty did, much uh, there. Yeah. It's not undertones. It's It sounds racist. It's overt. Yeah, yes. it is. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, good old boy. Hi, Sheriff. Yeah, right. A twerk. And that's why I'm pleased. To, uh, uh, mm. All it's right. It's very, very, there's a lot of that down here. I don't have time to play you the Pete Davidson farewell, but it is online, so check mm. it out if you like. And oh, remember, All right. Saturday okay. night, oh, I can, you know what, Mike? I can play it for you if you yeah, want. Go ahead. I'd love to hear him uh, saying bye-bye. Okay, so this is, uh, and remember, the most important thing to remember here is that Everyone got to say goodbye and have sort of a send-off except Kyle Mooney. And I think that's the most exciting thing of all. But here's the closing of his piece on Weekend Update. And I, I thought it was very cool. And then I remember when I auditioned for SNL, he looked me right in the eye and said, I don't think you're right for this show. So let's screw this up together. And that's exactly what we did. And that's why people who don't think I deserve this job shouldn't hate me since we have so much in common. Like, if anything, I should inspire hope, you know, like that literally anyone could be on Saturday Night Live. (laughs) And I appreciate SNL always having my back and allowing me to work on myself and grow. And, you know, thank you to Lauren for never giving up on me or, you know, judging me even when, like, everyone else was and for believing in me and allowing me to have a place that, like, I could call home with the memories that'll last uh, a lifetime. So thank you, guys. Pete Davidson, everyone. I think he's going to do okay, but I thought that was very sweet and very sincere. That's awesome. And uh, let us close with this also from Saturday Night Live. Not a particularly good episode. Normally, the last episode of the season is sort of more dazzling. It wasn't, but I did like this joke very much. Mike, you'll appreciate it because you understand uh, what it's like to be up in an airplane. An attendant on a Frontier Airlines flight helped deliver a passenger's baby while heading to Florida. Because on Frontier, it's not even worth asking if anyone on board is a doctor. (laughs) That's all I got. (laughs) We call this 
stereophonic sound. Sound town. That's sound town. We got to take a powder, everybody. We'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow on the Michael Mara Show. Hope you stick around for it. We really appreciate it, and I want to thank our special guest. Sorry about that. There he is. Our special guest, Jake the Snake, who's Woo! wrapped around the back uh, headrest of my uh, easy chair here in the uh, TMOS studios in Southwest Florida. For Rob Speedwag and Oscar Santana, we're running short on time. Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. It's all a big nothing. What makes you think you're so special? So what do you want me to do, drop my paints and fire a rocket? You know what you are, a hoot. With a capital H, that's what you are.